why should we eat organic? Does that guarantee that we're not eating genetically modified foods? And why is it really important for our health? I used to say eat non-GMO, and if you can, eat organic because you get all the benefits of organic. Now I say eat organic, and if you can't, at least eat non-GMO. It turns out Roundup herbicide, which is sprayed on most GMOs, was <clears throat> being remarketed or repurposed by Monsanto to use as a desiccant, a drying agent, primarily on grains and beans. So they'd spray it on the fields of these living crops and it would ultimately kill them. It would dry them down. It would force a rapid maturation or ripening of the grains and it would kill all the plants around it so that, it, so that the farmers would have a clean field for the following year. So if you look at oats, which happen to be kind of open to the air when it's sprayed, the Roundup gets absorbed into the oats. So you have higher levels of Roundup in oats than in Roundup Ready Soy, which might have been sprayed weeks before harvest. So it turns out that you definitely don't want eat to be eating things that have high levels of Roundup residues. It's I can go into it. Perhaps we'll have a question for that, but it's something you want to avoid. Now, organic does not allow the use of Roundup or atrazine or other dangerous toxic uh, synthetic chemicals. It also doesn't allow the use of GMOs. It doesn't guarantee their absence because drift happens, contamination happens, but it's the best system we have and it's highly recommended. If you can't eat organic, go to responsibletechnology.org, find out which products are GMO. We have a non-GMO shopping guide and also sign up to get the the report on the roundup residues so you'll know that wheat and oats and chickpeas and lentils are so high that those should be avoided unless it's organic and you'll understand which may have less roundup residues and are not gmo so that they could be in a category where it's a bit safer to eat if it's not organic so responsibletechnology.org if you can't eat organic, figure out how to avoid GMOs and high residues of Roundup. And so you mentioned we might have a, another question about Roundup, and we do. And um, if you can, tell us a little bit more about what it is, how it affects us, why it's in the news, why there are lawsuits about it, um, why you've said it's one of the most serious, serious health issues that's driving up disease rates. Well, Roundup appears to damage the foundation of health in many ways. So I'm going to give you some different categories. Microbiome, gut bacteria. It is an antibiotic. It kills bacteria. It kills the beneficial bacteria, not the nasty stuff. A recent study found that one of the ways that it kills bacteria is by blocking a particular pathway that's needed, the shikimate pathway. And not only does this kill bacteria, changing their diversity, turning the bacterial balance so that it promotes disease, but also the shikimate pathway is used to create the building blocks of serotonin, melatonin, dopamine, neurotransmitters that are necessary. They're the happy chemicals. They help block anxiety, and insomnia and pain and Parkinson's and other things. So in just the way it works with the microbiome, it can promote most diseases. It also grabs onto minerals, making them unavailable. Mineral deficiency can lead to hundreds of diseases, according to some, and minerals are needed in order for certain biochemical pathways to actually function. So if, they're, if the mineral isn't there, all the workers are on strike. They're just sitting there waiting for the mineral to show up and then they can go. That's what happens in many cases when Roundup or its chief poison glyphosate is circulating in our bodies. It also creates leaky gut, which is linked to so many diseases that a Harvard scientist wrote an article saying leaky gut is the source of all disease. 
and glyphosate causes leaky gut. So that, and inflammation and allergies and autoimmune disease all through that, and cancer and heart disease, all linked to leaky gut. It causes lack of communication between cells. It's called the gap junctions, drops that, which is linked to cancer. It causes the ability of the body to detox, to be impaired both at the level of the liver and on the level of the cell. We can go into the details, the NRF2, the P450 cytochrome pathway, but I think I'll just keep it jargon free. It can damage the DNA, which also can lead to cancer. It was described as the as a probable human cancer uh, carcinogen, class 2A carcinogen, by the World Health Organization's cancer body. It damages the mitochondria. The mitochondrial health is based on longevity. It's, it's the basis, for, according to some, for longevity, to be cancer-free, for energy, to fight brain fog, and so many other things because the mitochondria are the energy centers. There's some cells that have as many as 5,000 mitochondria in them because they need to be active, and it destroys the mitochondria, according to, you can see it in microscopes, told to me by Zach Bush, because he's seen it and his team has demonstrated it, breaks the structure of the cell down, the actin. It also can lead to birth defects that can be passed on from generation, and it also has shown the epigenetic changes where the, a pregnant rat was uh, injected with Roundup, I think it was mice actually, and it didn't affect the pregnant mouse or, the, or their offspring, but it affected their offspring and then their offspring. So the great-grandchildren, 90% of them had serious diseases, prostate problems, kidney problems, reproductive problems, many died in childbirth, either the pups or the, the mothers, in the great-grandchildren generation. So it passes it on. It can impair digestion. And I'm just getting started. So you can see the foundation from the gut microbiome, the use of, of, of uh, minerals, the neurotransmitters. It, it's, it can be a hormone disruptor. It can create fatty, uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. In fact, if you look at more than 30 diseases in the United States, they seem to have a bump up when Roundup was started to be sprayed on GMO soy and corn. And the, the rise of those diseases is coincidentally, I don't think so, parallel with the rise in the increase of Roundup. I mean, if you look at autism rates for six-year-olds, the R factor, the correlation is 0.997. If it were a one, it would be a perfect correlation. It's devastatingly tight. Now, correlation doesn't prove causation, but when we understand these, how Roundup and GMOs also, because that also is impacted, can cause these diseases, when we see humans and livestock and pets all getting better from these or similar diseases when they switch to non-GMO or organic food. When we see the animal feeding studies where they're force feed GMOs or Roundup to animals get sick or have precursors to these diseases or similar. We have enough data to suggest, more than suggest, that this correlation that we're seeing with diabetes and heart disease and senile dementia and deaths from senility and deaths from Alzheimer's and deaths from Parkinson's and deaths from intestinal infection and irritable bowel and all sorts of cancers and anxiety and insomnia and even suicide by overdose and schizophrenia and all these things we can, and uh, all of these things we believe are related promoted by Roundup and the GMOs. And so when we say avoid Roundup, we really mean it. And I think the best, the best education tool is the film Secret Ingredients that I did with Amy Hart. Go to secretingredientsmovie.com. And this is what people can do 
can use to convince their relatives. People came up to me and said, I was able to finally convince my wife or my husband or my daughter or my parents because I showed them your film. I could, I, they didn't want to hear it from me after so many years, but when I showed them the film, they became more vigilant than me. So this is the tool to use to convince those. And you can go and watch it with them if you can do that or just send them, buy, buy them a rental or send them a link or something like that.